Hey everybody, welcome to our second installment of Teach the Skill Landing Mechanics 101. Again, we're joined by my friend and colleague Calvin Giles from Brisbane, Australia, and his lovely granddaughter Ella, who's going to be demonstrating Calvin's progressions. Thanks, Calvin and Ella, for participating in our program, and enjoy the show, everybody. In all these progressions, whether we've chosen to change the direction that they move in, or the height of their landing, or the use of the different body shapes and body parts to change that shape, or indeed to change how the feet land on the floor, we keep referring back in our, with our coaching eye to that very basic technical model of landing. After you try a progression, you see that basic technical model failing and they don't hold the correct positions, then move them back to the previous place you were on the progression. That's the easiest thing to do. Now we're going to try and increase the frequency and the intensity of these landings by doing multiple movements. So the first one is forward and backwards to stick. The next one is side to side and stick. The next one is just forwards down a line to stick. Sideways down the line and stick. Now backwards down the line and stick. progress we can increase the height with that same intensity and frequency changing the same increase in height going sideways even greater complexity to this this intensity change and the frequency change we can move the height up and the complexity up To add to the intensity, we can start introducing the restart variety of landing. Restart jumps can be done sideways. We can now start looking at the single leg variety of this entire journey. So it starts with the destination, which looks like this. To be able to land, head up, chest up, and to make sure that the knee isn't collapsing, and then to make sure that she's landed, bending at the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Start in the simplest way by just stepping into the position. This leads to an in-place jump and land. So now we can do this moving sideways. It starts with, Ella's going to move to the left using the leading leg. Now Ella's going to move to the left again, but this time using the trailing leg. Now we can try a single leg backwards. Now we can try and stick the landing after a 90 degree turn in the air. Now she'll try a 180 turn. So as with the double leg landing, the single leg landing can be progressed by increasing the height over equipment, by using other implements uh, and other equipment to throw and catch and pass and to use boxes to get onto and to get off as well. So the whole progression for the double leg process can be repeated for the single leg process. So we've looked at the basic movement pattern for a double leg landing and a single leg landing. And each one has had 
head up, chest up, and bending at the ankle, the knee, and the hip as shock absorption. And what we've done from that then is progress that through different intensities, different heights, different body part changes, different foot positions, and all sorts of other progressions. And all the time referring back to those early technical models of the double and the single leg landing and the things that we expect to see. Now, if a person progresses too quickly along this journey, their landing will get less efficient and so you can take them back to the stage that they were looking efficient at along that progressive pathway. So we move forward and then we probably come back a little way. We move forward again and come back a little way. And you've got to mix as many of these variables as possible in this long, long journey of landing.